While there might be a lot of royal families with their luxurious royal residences all spread around the world, it would take you a really long hard look to find any that beats the Buckingham Palace, either in terms of popularity, looks, grandeur, and even cost. The Royal Castle, valued at around $5 billion, is the heart of the royal life in Great Britain. And not only is the palace the biggest royal residence in the world, but it is also sitting pretty amongst the biggest mansions in the world as well. The palace is known to have quite a lot of rooms as well as other facilities that indeed make it look like the super castle that it is. In today's video, we'll be taking a look inside what is the grandest royal palace in the world. Do stay tuned and enjoy! Originally called the Buckingham House, the palace was previously a large townhouse built for the Duke of Buckingham in 1703. Soon after, in 1761, it was acquired by King George III, in 1761 as a private residence for Queen Charlotte, with the palace known as the Queen's House at the time. It would then undergo a lot of architectural changes during the 19th century, just before it became the London residence of the British royal family after the accession of Queen Victoria in 1837. In the years that followed that, more structural changes would be made, with renovations even still going on quite frequently during this modern day as the royal family continues to make improvements to the palace. The huge mansion has 775 rooms, and it also has the largest private garden in the whole of London. From the entrance through the grand staircase, there's a long skylit gallery that measures 47 meters in length, and in this gallery, you'll find some of the palace's most notable artworks on permanent display. The gallery runs through the length of the blue drawing room, the music room, and the white drawing room on one side, while the throne room and the green drawing room are on the other side. These state rooms inside the palace are situated in the west wing where guests from far and near have been entertained over the years since the palace became the royal family's official London residence. These staterooms are the rooms used in official capacities, and they are also meant to receive and entertain dignitaries as well as also providing backdrops to televised messages. These rooms are also open to members of the public from July to October, which is something that has been happening since 1962 when the West Wing was first opened for public visitation. If you've not already done so, please subscribe for a closer look at other luxury properties like this. The blue drawing room, which is the biggest drawing room in the West Wing, comes with a range of colors from its red carpets to its caramel pillars, while the powder blue chairs and curtains also provide the touch of blue that the room gets its name from. Next to this room is the music room, and this place features deep blue pillars and entrance doors flanked by two fireplaces. And moving on from there is the white drawing room, which features mirrors and elegant gold moldings on every wall. The room also uniquely features a hidden door behind one of the mirrors, and this is a door that Queen Elizabeth II used when she had to welcome ambassadors and high commissioners. The room is also where the late Queen recorded many of her several Christmas messages. Coming next just across the hall is the green drawing room, which just like its name comes with green walls, chairs, curtains, and antiques. It also features several portraits of former royals from the reign of King George III. Next up is perhaps the most important stateroom in the palace, which is the throne room. This room features the thrones of previous monarchs, including the one of Queen Elizabeth from the 1953 coronation ceremony. The room is filled with antiques and artifacts, one of which is set of carved and gilded council chairs, which feature velvet seats and cushions while also having their gold backs shaped like Roman chariots. The room has also played host to a number of events and memorable moments. And talking about memorable is another room that is also popular, which is the ballroom. The room is known to host state banquets and other large events, and at one end of the room, there's a magnificent archway that houses a canopy and thrones that were created for the coronation of King Edward VII and his wife, Queen Alexandra. Also to add to this, the room features a musician's gallery with its own organ. While these staterooms are the rooms that mainly catch the eye inside the palace, other rooms for staff offices and accommodation, utility rooms, and private apartments for the royals are all available in this pretty luxurious royal property. Which other royal palace do you think comes close to Buckingham Palace? Let us know in the comment section. If you also enjoyed the video, hit that like button, share with your friends, and of course, 
don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, then you should also check out Top 10 World's Richest Royal Families in the World.